been a crazy uh, trip. Got to see the world, um, promote the fight, look my opponent in the eyes. But it's good to it's good to be home in front of my own people. I think it's it's good to wrap this up here. It's it's good for me to feel this energy going into into the camp to prepare. You spoke about the the tour. How has it been received? The tour. It was brilliant. Every every city blew me away. To be honest, we went to Rio. It was intense in Rio. Um, Vegas, Cali, Boston, New York, Toronto was crazy. New York was crazy. Toronto was crazy. Um, and I'd imagine this will blow them all out of water again. But so it, it it was fun. What kind of an opponent is uh, the other? <coughs> um, they're similar to to them all. To be honest, I think they're all. They have that same set routine, that same pattern, that same reaction. It's just another another body. When do you think uh, you'll fight in Crow Park? I'd say, I'd like to say the one after this. But the fact that this one's in the summer, I don't know whether... They, I, I will definitely fight before next summer, so I don't know whether they'd want to do it. Unless it's summertime here, so but we will see. I I I believe maybe the first defense could could very well be Crow Park. What does it mean to you to come here and have such reaction and for everyone to have taken to you and for you to be such a big star? I'm just doing. I'm just being being myself. I'm just out here trying to take the gold and take the money and secure my future, secure my family's future. That, that's it. It's great to have the people behind me. Um, but I'm just focused on the task at hand. How do you see the fight going, Connor? I think I'll be too strong for him. I'll be too powerful for him. Um, I feel everyone he's fought before has been afraid. He's made a career out of being short, stocky American wrestlers who are not too good on the feet, who are intimidated by it. But me, I'm going to go straight for him. And I'm going to put him away. Are you, are you surprised at the reaction that uh, UFC seems to be getting? Here? Yeah. No, not at all. This is... We are known for our fighting capabilities. This is... This is what our country is known for way back. So... This is the purest form of combat known to man. So... I'm not surprised. Martial arts is, is, is big in Ireland. It always has been. People have... There's always been someone in someone's family that has done some sort of martial art, whether it's boxing, whether it's kickboxing, whether it's taekwondo, whether it's karate. We've always been some way involved in it. It's been a part of our life here for a long time. Now we have a big platform that people can aspire to. Uh, so I, I'm not surprised that it has taken hold the way it has. Connor, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Um, yeah, Tom, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I am looking forward to the fight, 100%. I guess Kerrit is a taller road for Jose Aldo. What would you say about him at Squilge, Moss Fraser? Don't worry, I don't have my cunha down on your seat. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm a bit rusty now. I can understand what you're saying, but speaking, I'm a little bit rusty. Give it a world but I'll, I'll tell you, Tom, I can bully some count. Let me cuss. This jig Cahar Minod round over the hand. On the Carrigan Doggery and Larry. Fair play, but what, what kind of shape are you in? I need to brush up on that, yeah. I, well, 100%. Your are always available. I know. I, I, I can understand it because I was fluent. I, I was fluent and Ka I, Ka went, to our school. I went to a school in, in, in first in Tallaght in Clash to the Heat. It's on the time and Time and Park, and then when I moved to Luke when I was 17, I went to a school class there, Kush Livy. But I've been in an Irish school my whole life, and, and now well, I can't even. Toshi Agut, it's inside. I have it there, I have it there, I just need to brush up on it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. What kind of shape do you feel you're in, Connor? I feel, I feel in good shape. The most important shape you can be is if you're, str if you're in shape here, if you're in shape mentally. And right now, I, I have never been better in better shape mentally. So I'm going into this with a strong mind. Um, I feel great. It's it's perfect. This tour now, the fact that we've done this right now, whereas for the Boston fight, we've done this type of thing the week before the fight. When I'm cutting weight, cutting weight for me is, is is the real is the real struggle. So to have to do all that media obligation with cutting weight, it was hard. But now we have done this 15 weeks out. Now, 
now the hype is done. Now it's built. Now I go and prepare. So I, I am feeling really good. Connor. What do the next few weeks or the next few months hold for you until the fight? What will you be doing? I'm going to head. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do some of the camp here and then I'm going to head pack up and, and bring everyone from my team to the West Coast. And we're going to do it maybe five weeks in LA and then the final three weeks in Vegas. So I'm going to set up a house and a gym out in LA and then set up a house and a gym in Vegas and then that's what I'm going to do. Everyone, the people that I've came up with from the start, I've never. I've never gone to other gyms. I've never tr traveled to other gyms and trained. I have my team that I came up with, my coach John, my team at Stripe last gym. Now I'm in a position where I can, I can pack everyone up and bring them with me to to, to wherever the fight is. The fight's on the west coast. Um, go over there nice and early, customize to the time and and get used to that. So that's what the plan is. How important is just bring that bit of Ireland to America with you? One hundred percent. I, I'm my team is my team since day one. My coach has been my coach since day one, and, and that's the way it must stay. I don't feel, I feel people go and leave the country and go to different gyms and go in search of something, but we have built this together from, from the beginning, and, and, and this is what, we, what I will continue to do. My, the people who have been with, with me from the start are the people who have got me to this level. So thankfully I'm in a position where I'd like to go over to the West Coast to get used to that time, now I can bring everyone with me, so it's it's perfect. Just uh, you're always talking about constantly improving in every aspect of the game. For the last ten days, what have you learned about yourself and what have you learned about Jose? I, I've learned really nothing about myself or nothing that I didn't know. And same thing about my opponent. I feel he did not. I don't think he wants it the way I want it. Subtle tells. Any time that belt is around, he's handing it. He doesn't want the belt in close proximity to him. He doesn't want to hold on to the belt. He wants to hand the belt back every time. That to me tells he doesn't want the belt the way I want it. He doesn't. It's it's a it's a mental sign is what what I see with it. So I've learned from Jose what I already knew that he does not want this fight. He does not want me near him. But unfortunately. July 11th, there's nobody. Do you think maybe to, you've to awakened the best of him? That maybe you said that there was the other fighters in certain body types, certain standards of striking. Maybe you might have awoken this side of him that he needs. That maybe he should have been at a lot. I hope so. I feel I feel that the hype that and the talk it brings the best out of everyone. I feel everyone that I fought comes in in their best <coughs> physical shape. I feel the brand out that I fought in Dublin was in the best shape he could have been, been in. The Poirier fight, he was in the best shape he could have been in. They, they prepare as best they can. But when the mind is not there and the mind is not in it, it does not matter how good you come in, in, in shape. If the mind's not in it, you will be beat. <coughs> There's something you love, Connor. Every, every fight we see something new from you. You too. Have you been working on anything specific in the lead up to this fight that we might see? Yeah, I'm just looking to get that. Sorry. I'm proud of that. I'm proud of my evolution. I found that you cannot look back at my last few fights and, and see the same person. Every fight there's something new, every fight is a different it's a different shot, it's a different reaction. Nobody can deny my evolution. I look around at, the, at people in the game and they um, they are the same. Every fight is the same, it's the same, it's the same, it's about maintenance. Is it the same? Same thing with Jose, it's maintenance, same, same shot, same reaction. And then fight by fight by fight, war. After war, after war, the body, the body gives in. The brain goes. You know what I mean? And that, that's it. I keep getting better, whereas they stay the same until deterioration kicks in and, and they and they fall. Connor, you, Connor, you, Connor, you had an exchange with Ken Pagan on Twitter. Is that over yet, or have you forgiven him, or where does that stand? Jeez, that must have been about five years ago now. Yeah. I'd say. <laughs> um, have you met him since? I haven't. I haven't met him since he got smart after my debut. Hmm. I don't care about him. He's what's he now? He's a politician or something now. So fuck the politicians if you ask me. Anyway. You spent yeah. time with Pascal Collins. Uh, yeah, look, Pascal's a phenomenal coach and um, great gym out there in, in, in Blanchardstown. He's a great stable of professionals, and um, I'll definitely get get back out there this camp 100%. Connor, in terms, just, um, in terms of Irish sport and history, family <coughs> history. Obviously, we've had Steve Collins, Wayne Cola, you know, Katie Taylor, Michael Bruce. You know, where does this rank? This fight in Irish sport and combat history. I think it's I think it's right up there. I, I, it's never been done before. We've never been on this stage. We've been on the boxing stage. We've been on 
for our small country we've been on many many big stages but this is one stage that we have not been on so I am proud that we are here and, and that will spur me on to go and take it home. Connor, um, you spoke before about Irish people, how great they are fighting. What about the heat? We're not very good at heat. And how are you going to deal with that in Vegas? I'm actually alright with heat, funny enough. I think... I, I enjoy the heat. I like, like the sun. But, um, you think it could be an issue because although obviously he's, he's <coughs> used when he's from Brazil. Well, let me tell you something. Every 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 place has different air, and and because we went from Rio to Vegas, the air is completely different. In Rio, it's that jungle, jungle air. It's it's a, it's an unusual air, um, and it's completely different to Vegas. So I don't think it plays a factor. If you think it plays a factor, then it's going to play a factor. But for me, the building is surrounded by. You know what I mean? You're in a building. It's it makes no difference to me. So. Connor, are you surprised how easy it is to get under Aldo's skin? Not really, no. I, I, he's never seen no one like me. Like I said, he's built a career over of, of being small, short wrestlers who are intimidated. And he's, he's enjoyed his time intimidating them. But now I'm here. And he's shrunk. Now now he's not intimidating. Now now he now he's keeping quiet. So... Would you prefer the fight to be closer now that you do have a I would have liked the fight to be May 23rd. That was when it was scheduled for, but they chose the big, it was International Fight Week July 11, so um, they chose that one. But it, it is what it is. It, it makes no difference if the fight was today, if the fight was whenever. I, I'll beat him every every time, you know, so it makes no difference to me. How much importance do you put on, you know, grinding them up? Yeah. I'm just having fun with it. Do you know what I mean? It's intense. People can say what they want about it, but it's intense out there. You know what I mean? We're in this confined space. We're always coming face to face. We're always ready to fight both of us. So um, I'm not putting anything into trying to get into his head. I'm just letting my emotions be and let, and just being the way it is, letting myself be natural. I'm not trying to put anything on. Just whatever it is, it is. There's a lot said about his leg kicks, Connor. How, how do you train for, you know, to prevent that happening? Or, you know, what, what do you do in training to prepare your legs for something like that? Yeah, I hear this a lot about his leg kicks, but I think his kicking game is over eight. He's got a good low right kick. He cannot kick high. Um, the stance change is going to be is going to be a factor definitely because I am a southpaw with my, leading with my right foot. He is an orthodox leading with his left foot. I've won fights before where an opponent throws a heavy right kick. I check it and the foot snaps. The foot the foot shatters. I've won fights with that before. Um, so. If he throws a hard uh, leg kick and it is not timed right, and I check it, his foot will break. It happens many times when when southpaws face orthodox. So, but the size and the range that I have will will uh, will help me in that. So I am not worried about that one bit. I haven't heard you call around yet. I said I would knock. I said I would. He he would be done within four minutes. He would be out on his feet within four minutes of the first round. And then it will be a formality after that. How long his chin can hold up after that is up to him. He has been through many, many wars in, in his career. Every single fight, he comes out busted up. He's banged up badly after every single fight. So there's only only so much the, the, the brain can take. There's only so much the chin can take before you get hit by someone like me and it gives. So he will definitely be out on his feet within the four, first four minutes. It'll be a formality after that. How long he can take, we'll see. But the fight will be wrapped up within four minutes of the first round. Connor, Lamas and Mendez are still yapping away. Uh, what do you feel about the fight coming up? Will you even watch it? I'll probably watch it. I don't know. I don't give a shit about that. I mean, whatever that is, what it is. People in the mid tier, people in the low tier will always, will always be grudge. This is this is human life. This is the way it is. So I'm focused on the gold. They should be happy with their main event slot, and that's that. Speaking of Mendes, obviously he fought Jose last time out, and he gave him a bit of stick. Seemed to get under his skin a little bit. Um, is that what you want? Because ultimately in that fight he stood in the pocket um, with Mendes because Mendes <coughs> got in the skin and pissed him off. I don't. Th I just think that's the way he fights anyway. <coughs> I think that's anything got to do if anything he was he was going at Mendez he was pushing him around that's not the case with me he hasn't opened his mouth to me so but I think that's just the way he fights anyway he's sloppy he, he has his basics down he has his straight shots he has his low kick 
But after that, he goes wild. If he catches them, he, he opens up, and uh, uh, I find his shot selection is weak. Do you think your style is kind of custom built to beat that toy style, Connor? I think so. He comes in sloppy against me. He tries to come in on the pocket, rushed against me. I'll tip him across the, across the, anywhere around the temple, anywhere around the skull, and he goes down. So that's what I feel will happen. I feel I'll hit him. We'll exchange one or two. He'll wobble. He'll get loose. He'll get wild, and he'll go down. Connor, what's your long-term future in the UFC? Suppose you do win in July. I mean, can you see yourself defending the title for six, seven, eight years? Are you going to be around that long? Who knows? Who knows what 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 the game what the game has? I came into this promotion as a two weight world champion. I'm very proud of my accomplishments there. And um, with my previous promotion, I simply vacated the belts. So I never, uh, in my mind, I am a two weight world champion. So I definitely have my eyes on multiple weight titles in, in the UFC. We'll see. I, I I like to keep busy as long as my body is healthy. As long as I'm fit and healthy, I will compete. One thing I will not do is stay in this game longer than I should. I am smart as well. Nine years. We'll see. It could be even. It could be even less. Who knows? I, I will. I will win my belt, and then I will decide what to do. Connor, will you go up to one five five if you win straight away, or will you defend? I'd like. I'd like to get that belt straight away. If I'm being honest, there is a lot of fights in, in the one forty five pound division. There's a lot of people who have spoke. Um. So. The wrestler question is a question that the yeah. fans want answered. How can he handle the American wrestler? Uh, so if that's a question that the fans want answered, then I will go and I'll beat one of these 145-pound wrestler contenders. Connor, there's obviously two big fights coming up the Federal Division as well. See, the one this Saturday, uh, uh, Ricardo Lamas is fighting um, Mendes. Chad Mendes, sorry, and then we have Frankie Edgar and Uriah Faber. Uriah is coming into 145. Who, uh, who's the number one contender out of those four for the title after this fight? Whoever wins most impressively, this is the game. It can change in a heartbeat. You can be you can be the man one minute, and then you're a prelim the next minute. So, whoever wins most impressively. But I don't really pay attention to that right now. All I see is the gold. And we were talking about him obviously having a lot of miles on the clock, stagnating. Do you think though, on the flip side, that coin, if you if, if the fight were to go beyond maybe round one, round two, that that championship? round experience will stand to him do you feel that that could be a potential advantage for him? No I, I don't think so I don't think experience plays anything we are both experienced we are both we are both under the spotlight so I don't I don't think that will play in I think the fact that he has been through wars and I have not been scratched that will play the difference you know I mean that, like I said you can only take so many smacks before one puts you down Connor, the uh, MTV documentary a couple of years ago, you name checked Aldo. He said, Who the hell is Aldo? There is no Jose Aldo. How long is this fight in your head? Have you been eyeing it up? The gold is all I've been eyeing. The gold and the money. <clears throat> I'm not going to sit here and lie to anyone. This is prize fighting. I'm here for the money. I'm here for the money and the gold. And I think people that say they're not here for that are talking shit. They're lying to themselves and they're lying to you. This is prize fighting. I'm here for the money and the gold. I don't care about opponent. It could be anyone. How do you plan to celebrate if you win? Huh? <coughs> I don't know. I will feel. I will hug that gold tie. I will raise a high. I will drape the tricolor around me and celebrate. It's been a, it's been a long road for for my country to get here. Before we before I got here, we weren't even on the map. They didn't even look at us over here. Now, now it's. Now it's all they seem to be talking about. So I will embrace it and I will raise the tricolor high and I will be proud of it. Are you, are you a stadium to defend the belt? One hundred percent. It's definitely in the in, in the making. They were talking about because of the rain and all. But it's you been got a, good roofing companies over here. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? There is roofing companies looking for work. <laughs> and we are they are billionaires, you know what I mean? So put the fucking roof on the place and we'll we'll do it. So we'll see. Dave it, it will happen. Said, sorry, Dave <coughs> said that he's likely to bring the UFC back to Dublin later this year. Would you be happy to defend the title again and be in the, in the three arena, as we call it now? Of course I would. I'd never turn down an opportunity to fight in my in my home in my hometown. If, if it was the three arena, I would look. I, I would embrace it, just because it's not a stadium. I'd fight in here. You know what I mean? To fight at home, to be at home is. That's special to me. Do you know what I mean? That that moment in, in Dublin, nobody can take that away from me. The, the fact that I brought them back, 
got my teammates on. That whole night was, that was a moment in history, and that's something that I'll take with me till the end. So, I'll, I, I will never turn down an opportunity to, to represent my country here at home. Connor, do you expect anything different from Aldo? Do you think he could go to the ground? They all do. I think. <laughs> take you to try to take you to the ground. They all do. <laughs> I think a few exchanges, and he'll turn into a grappler pretty quick. So. I'm expecting the same, I'll hit him, he'll wobble, he'll shoot in a panic, I'll hit him again, he'll fall, I win. Connor, did you get to work out with uh, Rory McDonald? I know you've been... Yeah, we got a session in out there in Canada, we've done some jiu-jitsu. Is that something you're going to do now, you're going to end the line ahead of the fight, because he's obviously on the same card as well? <laughs> um, uh, not, not particularly, no, you know, I suppose even rolling with him made me realise, you know, the people who, I've got to the level I'm at, I've got as good as I'm at with the people that is around me. So I'll keep the people that I have come up with. And, and, and I, will, I will keep, you know, there's so much at stake here. There's so much on the line here. Keep the people that you came up with. Bring them to wherever you're going and keep going. You've seen Aldo push Mendes on the last week for his little the square off. He's done a lot more to him. What's he do doing? Do you, do you think he, he's broke? Look, look, look at his demeanor. Do you know what I mean? Look at the way he has been with everyone else, except me. He's done absolutely nothing to me. He's not even, he won't even look me in the eye. So, 100%, he's never seen someone like me. What happens this afternoon if <coughs> you know, you're up on the stage and he puts his hands here? He better behave. <laughs> Connor, what's the whole thing with you not allowed to put your hands on him? What, what did he say to Dana? I don't know, it was coach rang Dana saying, make sure Connor doesn't touch him. I said, I don't know, I don't give a shit about that, to be honest. They just don't want me near him. They want to make sure there's separation. They want to make sure there's distance. July 11th, there's no one there to separate. So. And is it a threat that if you touch him, you know, there's going to be a, a row or that, you know, the fight's going to be off or what's his problem? I, I, I don't know. I don't, don't really give a shit about that, to be honest. I'm just... I touch him, he do nothing. So, but all the because he, you know, obviously, kind of, we all know, you know, the hard work he put in the gym, all that stuff he came out about the drug test and all that. That must have really got, must have annoyed you. It didn't annoy me. If anything, <clears throat> seems to me in Brazilian culture, it's it's a big part of Brazilian culture. So I'm happy the fight is in Vegas. I'm happy it's a new era of the sport where they do out of competition testing. It's essential. I even read an interview just recently of his, what his coach said, <clears throat> and I was actually blown away by it. My stomach turned a little bit, to be honest. His coach was saying, um, the UFC need to decide whether it's spectacle or sport, because if they, take, if they, if they do the enhanced testing, the athletes won't be as good. But if they let them be on performance enhancing drugs, the spectacle will be the best spectacle they've ever seen. And I'm reading this thinking, what the fuck is this? Do you know what I mean? How, the f how can, what is that like? Do you know what I mean? That's almost like the confirming to me what I already suspect. So you can say what you want. So I'm just happy that we will be, out, we will be tested out of competition. <clears throat> I just hope he is clean. I hope he doesn't get popped and then the fight scrapped because that's that's a fear of mine. Connor, and, and now now after reading that, even more so. Connor, we know the ADL boys, uh, obviously we're on the different nerves. Um, they sort of a checkered history of you know, pulling out from fights and missing weight a little bit. Are you 100% sure do you think this fight's going to go down? I, I hope so. All I know is I will show up. That's it. All I know is I will show up. I hope he trains smart. I hope he stays safe. He's pulled down many contests on US soil. He's, he's only fought his last few fights on British or on Brazilian soil, where there's no commission out there. So I hope he stays safe. I hope he stays clean. But we will see. All I know is I will be there. Do you think that's an issue? <coughs> on Jose's end? It could be. Connor, what about Ronda at the WrestleMania? Any plans to move over that side? I actually watched it on the, on the other day. It was brilliant, wasn't it? Yeah. She judo threw Triple H. <laughs> she should have threw Stephanie as well. I thought Stephanie could have taken it. Uh, slam, I would have thought, because she wrestled. But I don't know. I thought it was... I, I'm not thinking of that. You know? 
I'm not into the into the show business. This is this is the fight business for me. So who knows? You're about the, the money, though, right? Yeah, damn right. <laughs> I, 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 like I said, if they wave it, I might I might go, but we'll see. Where does Connor come from, though, Connor? Is there, are you driven by fear of being poor or just the desire to be rich? I don't know. I just want security. I just want my family to live good. I want myself to live good. I don't think that's a bad thing to admit. You know what I mean? I think you should admit that you want. You, you know what I mean? You want the comfort. You want to. You want comfort. You want security. I think people maybe shy away from that a little bit and say it's not all about the money. It's not about that. But if you, if you have that mind frame, well then it won't be, and then you won't. Do you know what I mean? You need to put commit yourself 100% to what what it is for, uh, uh, and then you will reap the rewards from it. So I'm not trying to hide nothing from nobody. I'm here to secure my family's future, to live good. And, and, and I have no shame in, in saying that, you know what I mean? It, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm fucked up with it, I don't know. But that's the way I see it. Connor, we've seen a few years ago, maybe around 10, 15,000 Ricky Hatton fans go to Las Vegas. That's probably <coughs> the largest ever fan contingent from Europe to go to an event in Vegas. What are you expecting from the Irish fans? I'm expecting it to be insane. They were saying to me, one of the Brazilian reporters was saying that chants are, there's only one Conor McGregor, you know that chant? And then their chant is, ooh, vamos here, you will die. And they were saying, what do you think it's going to be like when the two chants meet in the arena? And I'm saying, the Brazilians won't even be heard. <laughs> so, do you have a message for your fans traveling over to see you? Yeah, I'm grateful to the people, like, to think of the times we are in. I know the struggle people are going through and to think that they're saving up and traveling over to support me, I, I'm forever grateful for that and I'm blown away that everyone that is saving up and everyone that is coming over to watch the show, it, it, uh, th these are things that motivate me, these are things that spur me on to go and, to go and take it home. Connor, how are you dealing with the fame, you know there's an awful lot more attention on you now, is it, is it easy to get distracted? It's been like this for a while. I don't think it's, it's been like this for a while now. I'm mean, with the UFC two years. I think the last two years it's been. I suppose it's gotten a little, it's gotten bigger, but it's been the same. So I take it in my stride. I recognise that it's part and parcel with it. It's part of the game. If you cannot handle it, handle it. Well, then you're in the wrong business. So now, um, Chad Mendes was on the MMA hour yesterday. He said facing Aldo was the hardest thing he's ever done in his life. Do you expect him to be tested to the limits on July 11th? <clears throat> I'm not Chad. I'm me. I'm my own man. I said, I spoke with his teammate Uriah. He was talking shit as well. Him and his little buddy TJ. I seen them two backstage one the other, a few weeks ago. And I said to him, I'm gonna watch me, watch me. Watch me do what none of you could do. Watch me, watch me, watch me make this look easy. Watch me whoop him when all of you fail. So I'm gonna make it look easy. I'm gonna do what not one of them could do. That was alpha male. So that's another one that's gonna happen then. The line counter. Like I spoke to Roy as well last week, and he was, uh, you know, more or less saying the same thing. It's a fight he'd definitely like down the line after Frankie if he was to be Frankie. <coughs> that's it. He's in line for a number one contender fight. Frankie. Yeah. Frankie's a number one contender. If, I said, if you can win, I, I said, I wish you well. If you win, we'll do it. So, Frankie seems the only guy in the division that you seem to have a bit of respect for. Is that fair to say? Make no, ma make no mistake about it. I have respect for any man that steps foot in, inside the octagon at any level, whether it's at the top game or, or, or in a small hall. I have respect. But this is, this is business, and, and when you're in, in the way of business, Business has no friends, you know what I mean? So. And tonight, obviously, with the, with the fans, you know, it's going to be a good send off to end the world tour. How special is it for you to be in front of 4,000 Irish fans tonight? It's going to be brilliant. It's exactly, it's the right way to end it. We, we begun it in Rio. It was hostile territory in Rio. I took that intensity from Rio straight through the, the, <laughs> the world tour. Now I'm going to fin uh, finish it with that positive energy from the Dublin crowd. It's gonna bring me right through the, through the whole camp, so I am happy the way it has turned out. I feel it's you, perfect for me. Connor, you've spoken about representing Irish MMA, but do you think this is the biggest fight in the history of European MMA? This is the biggest fight in the history of MMA, in the sport. It's the biggest fight in, in the featherweight division. It's the biggest fight for my country. It's a big fight. 
it's a big, kind of, big fight. Just uh, in Rio, we saw you comfortable in the role of the villain, and the, you know the crowd representation towards you. But uh, tonight you'll be the hero. In Boston, you were the hero. Is there either role that you find suits you better, or that you enjoy more? I'm not playing a role. Every crowd has a different energy. Every place has a different energy. So I just feed off of the energy, and whatever the energy I take, it, it is what it is. So I'm not playing any 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 role. I was having fun in Brazil. They were mocking me. They were saying they were going to kill me. So I put my feet on the table and told them I own their city, and they were going to do nothing about it. I just rolled with it. So I just feed off the energy, and whatever that energy is, it is. Not just for yourself, but for the sport of MMA in general. What do you think the RT documentary has done in for MMA and yourself in this country? I think it's given. I think it's given people an insight as to what this game is. A lot of people don't know what, the, what, what, what it takes, what goes on backstage. Even a lot of the American journalists and stuff would not have seen the type of footage that you have seen already. That type of backstage access, that's never been seen before in the history of the sport. So I think, I think it's done, it done good for the sport. I think parents can, can watch it. Parents can see what, what it actually takes, what, what, what the game is about, and then their kids can watch it alongside them. And then, then you have kids who are dreaming of following the path with their parents backing. That's a strong, that's a strong um, combination for su success right there. Your parents backing these kids to, to, to follow the martial arts dream. So that's why I honestly truly believe that the next generation will be something special. You've spoken as well about the amount of money people are paying to go to Vegas and in this time how bad it is and we see seen online people pay three three tickets some to go to the event tonight even though it's even though it's free tickets. Why do you think you yourself have caught on so much with the Irish public? Is do you think you're relatable to everyone or why do you think you're so popular? I don't know. Um I haven't got a clue to be honest. I'm just doing I'm just being me. It's it's madness that but there's people charging for this event right here today. That's that's madness. That is, it's a free fucking ticket event. No, but I'm, I, I think I'm saying that people are willing to pay it. I'm not right, sure right, if people right. are selling it, but people are yeah, willing to pay it. I don't know. It's, it's unbelievable. It's it, 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 I'm blown away by it. Literally, I'm absolutely blown away by it. You stayed in Rio since you came back from the, the injury, Connor. You had three fights in six months. I know it's a six-month layoff to the next fight. Is that you know you like to stay active? Is that frustrating to you? When they rang me and told me about the fight in July, because we had scheduled May, so I was happy with May. I mean, it, it is what it is. If anything, the fact that it's a little bit more distant, we got to do this tour. I got to handle all the media obligation. I don't think people can realize how how tiring the media game is, the media side of it is, going from interview to interview to interview with the same question over and over and over again. But to do it, to do it this far out, to build it all, to come face to face, to do all the obligation, and then be free, free to train, free to prepare. I think it's the right way to do it. I think it's the way it should be done because it can it can drain people. People can go into the fight mentally drained off of the media obligation. So when they first told me that was July, I wasn't too happy, but now I am. Now I'm happy. You've never seen anyone interact with Jose the way he's been over the last week. Do you think coming into the fight now mentally? You're mentally stronger than them, as if you're going to be throwing shots with full conviction rather than previous opponent to throw a one two and sort of short on the kick because you're waiting for a, a, a counter. You talk about that a bit. Do I think he would be? No, do, you th do you think you, you have to be hand coming into the fight? We've never seen anyone interacting like this. And it, it is getting to him. He will come forward and I will come forward. Hello, back to me. And that will be it. I believe I want that, I want that, sh uh, I want that slot. I don't want to sit back and watch, you know what I mean? <laughs> that, that was the dream, to bring it back here. And you best believe every time they come back here, I want Donny. That's, I will never be too big for, for that. Tom, are you going to watch the Mayweather fight? If so, who do you think is going to win? Yeah, I'll, of course I'll watch it. Um, I think Mayweather stops him. I think Mayweather stops him in the layer rounds. Mayweather's age better. 
Manny has aged. They're both similar age, but Manny has aged more through wars in, in, in the ring. Same as Jose, I feel. Connor, coming back from the mm -hmm. sorry, coming back from that ACL injury. Do you think with Jose's like, background in soccer and so forth that he's gonna look to expose that? Expose that knee with the kicks? Okay. You're Irish mate, yeah? It's called football over here. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, football, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> This is this is mixed martial arts. This isn't football. You know what I mean? What's you can, you can kick a ball that has no that doesn't play into a fight. So I can also play football. So I don't pay attention to that. Connor, your coach Sean Kaplan said there's two things fighters encounter when they encounter you. The first is when they come face to face and they see that crazy and I quote nut look in your eye <laughs> and they know oh shit. This isn't joking, this boy's real. Any chance taking off the glass and seeing that crazy nut looking up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been a long tour, I know you're knackered. Yeah. You, can, you wanna see my eyes or what? Are my eyes there we are go, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know, they think it's a joke. I find that they think it's a joke. But when they're face to face, when it's time to fight. It's no joke no more. John said the second thing they encounter is the first time that first punch hands. When do you think that's going to be, July 11th? It will happen. I will hear him. He already knows it's no joke no more. He are, I always hear him saying it's a sell. It's a sell a fight. I'm not trying to sell nothing. I'm trying to kill him. And that's it. This is, this is, this is the way it is. It's not a joke. It's not an act. I'm here to take what's mine. Thank you. Did you, find, did you find John or did John find you? And what do you make of that sort of uh, coming together? Um, did I find John or did John find me? I actually found John. John, because when I moved school, <clears throat> John, or my coach Tom, or my teammate Tom, was training with John. And he, and he introduced me to him. So that, that's how it happened. He said I was doing some boxing, Tom was doing some grappling. And then John was obviously doing MMA and was the main guy in the country at the time. So he introduced me to him. I went down, met John, and then the rest is history. Was but that luck or what? I think it was a little bit, of, a little bit of luck. Thankfully, Tom, because I, because I, I was, I was just kind of a floater. I always am. I just do my, I, even in, even now I do my own thing. I go to the gym on my own time. I bring people to me. We, I operate on my own time. So it was, it was a bit of luck that Tom. Source John, Tom done a little bit of research. Who's the number one guy in the country? Who's the main guy in the country? And John was the main guy in the country. So without Tom, I probably wouldn't be here either. And of course, without John, I wouldn't be here. So if I hadn't a mill from Crumlin to Lucan, I've been too modest. Huh? Has that been too modest? I, I I don't know. You know, people. When you meet people, they set you on the right path. And John sent me on the right path. And Tom, we used to always discuss. Uh, we used to always talk about the dream. Me and Tom we used to always visualize being at, at this stage. So without that, those conversations, I don't think I would have had those thoughts. You know. So, but who knows? I can't think of any other way because that's just the way it's yeah, been. Yeah. Thanks, man. Come here. Video went viral during the week of you calmly explaining the difference between the UK and Ireland to Dana White. Is that something that you have to deal with a lot when you're doing press in other countries? Sometimes, but he was only he was only messing with me. He said it backstage. I was only I was only winding up, but it wasn't the time to wind me up. <laughs> you know what I mean? When I'm on stage with, with, with Jose, but I'm sure he's gonna eat a lot of abuse today over it. So. Oh, well, yeah. So when I was over there, what was his first thought when he grabbed your neck, when you grabbed his neck? And he said, I don't even I don't even think I thought it was Conor that grabbed my neck. Where's the reaction? He knew. Yeah. He, knew, but like, he said to me over there. He said. I didn't even know, I just looked around to see. <laughs> Connor, you've loads of uh, Irish fighters later on in the press conference. Are you proud to be like kind of leading the way for more SPG and Irish fighters in the UFC? Of course I am. You know what I mean, to give people an opportunity to come onto this stage and to make money and to, 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 to make a living out of this. That's, again, that's something nobody can take away from me. I paved the way for this. So I, I, I take great pride in this. And when, when it's all said and done, and when I walk away from the game, and I watch these young kids coming up that no one's even heard of at the minute, that are, that are climbing, the, climbing the ladder, I can sit back and watch with a smile and all that. I pe played some part in that. That's something that I will take with me. So I have many, many accomplishments 
in this game that I, that I am extremely proud of. Do you find it slightly amusing, Connor, that it's quite weak for Lamas and Mendes, and I know they've been getting a bit wound up by you, and uh, nobody's talking about the fight, everyone's talking about this. Does that give you any satisfaction? They should be happy it's a main event slot, let's be honest. But for me, it was prelims. But for me, Jose was in the co-main event. Do you know what I mean? He was defending his belt in the co-main event. Now we have people who are in the top 10 of the featherweights who are getting their own main event slot on their own card. So they should just be happy that they have their main event slot. Do you think fellas like that should maybe take a little bit of a leaf out of your book instead of complaining about your progress? And maybe follow I find it funny the way people, comp are comp people talk about the way I do, the way I handle my, my situation. And then, yeah, go out and do the same thing. Go out and try and mimic it. I think people just need to be themselves. You can't be anybody but yourself. Go out, be yourself, win fights, win them impressively. Everything else takes care of itself. You don't need to put on an act. You don't need to be anyone but yourself. Win, win impressively, be who you are, and let the good times roll. <coughs> Sorry, Connor. do you think maybe winning the UFC title it help MMA become as mainstream as soccer and GA in this country? I think it already is. I think it is. I think the amount of kids, the amount of gyms, the amount of... The amount of people involved in martial arts in this country is, has skyrocketed. So it's just going to keep growing. Of course it will probably... I mean, it's just going to keep growing and growing and growing. So GAA and those games are... Football and hoodie, those games have been around since... Since way back, so... But so is fighting as well. You know what I mean? We've been fighting way back as well, so... I think... I think it will. Connor, can I just ask you to be... With the success of Notorious... Uh, congratulations, by the way, amazing show. Just wanted to say, I know when Love Hate finished, everyone was looking for something to watch on Monday night, <laughs> and now they're all addicted to watching Notorious. <laughs> is there any chance of seeing more episodes going forward? Yeah, what's happening is right now we are. <clears throat> thank you for them. I'm, I'm proud of that one. I, mean, I put a lot of work into that. You, I didn't just, I didn't just have the cameras follow me. I didn't just, I, the name. I wasn't executive producer. That wasn't just, that was that wasn't for nothing. I put in a lot of work on that. I had full creative control on that project. Every every episode that came through, we went through rigorously. You know what I mean? I put a lot of work into that. So I'm proud that to show to show people something that they've not seen before, to give people a, a deeper look on the sport, and, and maybe maybe change their opinion on the sport. But um, right now, what's happening is we have we have worked a deal with Fox. The, the series will go out on Fox Sports. We were also in talks with Globo, which is the big, uh, the big TV station in Brazil, BT Sport in the UK. We are also heading to Can the Cannes Film Festival, or some, one of them festivals, and they're going to they're going to sell that to, to major networks around the globe. So it's been a highly successful project for me. Um, but as far as the next one, what we're going to do now is we're in talks. I want to make a film. I want to I want to <coughs> wrap it up with a feature film all through the camp, all in the world title fight, the post fight, and then have that maybe a two and a half hour film, have it on, on, on TV stations here, free to air, and then have it cinemas all over the world. Finish I feel, exactly, t finish the story, you know what I mean? This, I can always look back. Long after I'm gone, that story will still be told. That's something, again, there's another thing I'm pr extremely proud of, so. Um, and even, even the people that have come up with me, like the, the severe MMA people that have been f coming to the local shows way before everyone else. And to see them coming up and they're, you know, they're getting their shot. And I'm proud that people are coming up with me. It's, it's, it's good times. But like, I, I, feel, I feel what your passion can do. Your passion opens up avenues that you can take. And it's important to go down that avenue at 100 mile an hour. You know, take full advantage of every avenue that opens. And that was an avenue that has opened for me. The fight game is my passion. Competing is my passion. The documentary, the TV, the TV series, that was, a, that was an avenue that opened up. And I capitalized fully and, 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 and I'm reaping the benefits from it. So I am, uh, I am proud of that. This time two years ago, Connor was a couple of days away from your debut against Marcus Brimage within this weekend. Doesn't two years ago? Two years ago, yeah. It doesn't madness. seem like that long ago. Madness. Yeah. Absolute madness. I have to pinch myself. Honestly, every, every day I wake up, I pinch myself. Like, two years. That's, that's no time at all to see what's at the happen. See how the country's at the jumping on board. 
I'm grateful every single day of my life. People forget as well there was a nine, ten month gap in between where you were injured. Do you think this fight would have happened by now if you hadn't been with the injury? Yeah, I think so. But it's hard to kind of look at that. This is the way it's shaped. And, and everything was a blessing in disguise. That injury was a blessing in disguise. That injury showed me what, what true preparation is. Showed me, I learned so much more about the human body that stood to me. So when I came back, I came back better than everybody. So um, it all worked. My coach always says, it's the perfect storm. You need that. It's, it's just a combination of things that just come together and create the perfect storm. And everything that has happened, it has all been perfect and it's all leading into this moment. Conor, about three years ago I went to a local show, Man of War, and you were rolling with, uh, for the first time ever shooting at event, you were rolling with, I think it was Tommy Martin at the time, mm -hmm. and um, he went down one by side, <laughs> I think it was uh, choked by over shoulder. But shoulder pressure, yeah. yeah. Is Shoulder that? of justice, my couch calls that. <laughs> so it's not. It, it, you feel like you're safe. You cup the. You cup the lap. Turn the body, and the chin's one like that. And you're cutting off the blood supply here. It's like a. It's a quick one. You don't really feel like you're in danger, and then next thing you're asleep. And Tommy Martin's actually really, really good at it. If you're, if you're not tight with your frame. He'll put you asleep yeah, you with it. You were very vocal questions. about. <coughs> you, were, you were very vocal with him about that. You were do this and do that. You know, is are you always coaching them to try and push to the top level where you are, like the likes of Tommy Martin coming through at him, and then I could be pronouncing the guy, the guy's name wrong, but Fabio, Fabio. Yeah, um, Franz maybe. I don't know. Franz right. Fabio. Yeah. Any, anyone that's like they're all starting to make a name. There's now. no ego in the gym. There's no ego in the gym. Out here on the stage. You must be cocky, you must be confident, you must have that arrogance that nobody can touch you, no one's gonna do nothing to you. In the gym, the, we have a sign at the gym, when you walk into the gym it said, no egos beyond this point. So you walk past that point, you leave your ego at the door. So anyone in the gym, we're all teaching each other. Everyone is looking to learn. That's what, the, that's what martial arts is about, it's about growing, growing together. So anyone that's in the gym, we, we look to help each other, we look to, we look to grow together, so I, I am definitely vocal and I definitely look to encourage my teammates, of course. Connor, would you say that you're the most confident Irish sports person of all time? <coughs> I don't know, I think there's been many confident sports people. I feel for our small nation, we've dominated many, many areas of sport, so I think we are all confident in, in, in our own way. So, one more. What are you going to say that I'll do later on? I don't know. I'll see what happens. People will ask the questions. You sit down, they ask us questions and...